Good morning. I'm Deborah DeBoer, and this is our Friday Fuel. I am delighted today to have one of our, I was going to say our oldest members, one of our longer lasting members who's been with NASBAR for a long time. Glow, if you want to introduce yourself, tell a little bit about when you did join NASBAR and a little bit about what you're doing now. Okay. Hi, I'm Glow Matlin. I'm with Compass. I started out with Justine Can, if any of you remember, back in 1987, pregnant, saying, I need to do something part-time just to keep me busy. Um, obviously, many years later, 37 or so years later, here we are, um, went through a few different stages, not just Can, went to, we were purchased by Caldwell Banker, um, and then five years ago, I went to Compass. So here we are. So here you are. You've been doing real estate through a lot of different changes. We were talking about that earlier, the changes that we're seeing. Um, I, as I look through some of the, the stuff that you've posted about yourself, one of the interesting things that I noticed, and I discovered because someone, in, this must have happened before I actually worked here, you were Humanitarian of the Year at, for NASBAR one year. I'm not going to ask you what year. I'm not going to ask you. <laughs> and I probably don't remember. <laughs> okay, good. But what I wanted to ask, and I, but I did notice, I read through a lot of the information about you, is you are very active in lots of different boards and charities. I want to know, do you do it because of business? Do you do it because of what you love to do? Does it affect your business? How do those two obligations, because being doing a fair amount of charity work is time consuming. Real mm -hmm. estate is time consuming. Right. How do you make that all work together? Well, I think foremost, I mean, certainly I love what I do real estate wise, but I've always been involved in charities from a very young age. I mean, it was something my family instilled in me. So it was not like, it doesn't, I never did it because I was trying to get business. Let's okay. put it this way. It was always because that's what I want to do. I had a very strong interest in ADA. Um, I was very involved with American Disabilities Association in Chicago with a wonderful gal who unfortunately has passed away, uh, Marco Bistro, who was really instrumental in getting things passed in um, the industry, working with real estate mm -hmm. people like me, um, but was really, really strong in getting things done. So for me, it was just a continuation. So that was kind of my first um, really strong company, or not company, but strong group that I joined then got involved with mental health. And Jocelyn Center, that is actually started in Northfield and now has spread like wildfire. Tell me what that is. Jocelyn Center is a place for, number one, people who can't afford to go to a mental health facility because they don't have the funds to do it. It started out as originally being sponsored by the state of Illinois until the funds ran out. So then my husband and I, my husband Eric, um, he was on the board, we got very involved. And as time changed, more and more people we got involved with, brought more dollars, and now they are completely funded without the state of Illinois. And now they've spread all over. And it really gives an outlet for a young adult to have a place to go and to be supported. And if they need extra services, it's kind of like a resource center. Okay. Um, during the Highland Park shootings, they were huge. They were Johnny on the spot to be there and help all the people who really needed extra help. And they're an amazing organization. Strongly support them. Um, but, you know, we continue, my husband and I, very involved in the cancer associations. When we were, Susan Komen used to be pretty heavy. Yes. Here. They're not so much anymore. Um, but wherever we could give back. It's important to give back to the community. So we, I never looked at it as a place to get business. Maybe I have along the way. I've never even thought about it, to be honest. It's just what I like to do and will continue to do it. Then it, that's, I like that and I love that you did a commercial for the Jocelyn people. That's a great thing for people. Yes. I think people are so unaware of that there are resources out there Correct. because they're so scattered. One of the, I was doing one, we were doing leadership training, and one of the projects that someone was trying to work on was becoming like a clearinghouse for all the resources that existed. Didn't, didn't quite work mm -hmm. out. She moved away, so it didn't work out. But I thought that was a brilliant idea to Absolutely. sort of collect the resources for people who need help with that. Absolutely. So terrific. But on to business. So what do you do to create business? I just show up. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think one of the things when I first started in the business, we moved to the North Shore, I didn't know one person, not one. I really didn't. 
Where did and you live before that? We lived in the city. Okay. And I was in a different business, so this was my new world of real estate. And when we moved here, I would take floor time, which was something we used to do in the past. I do remember. And I would do open houses, and I put myself out there, and I was pretty good at connecting with people. And that's really how my business evolved. And I was very lucky, I think, just being at the right place at the right time, young and maybe not that smart of what I was doing and just kind of going with it. I think now with the way our social media works and our internet and interactions, I'm still about networking. I love networking. I love back to real life of seeing people at a party or at a, you know, going to an office event really important to do that. Um, I think it's a lot harder now for the newer agents coming in because there isn't, you know, floor calls per se. And floor calls were lovely. It gave everybody oh, it a start. Right. It, it gave everybody great. like a, a jump start to find the first three clients that they had. It's true. It did. I think it was, I think that's a big loss for us. I think so too. And I really, you know, I think you have to have connections, unfortunately, now to get in the business. I think it's very hard to just kind of go in there and expect it's going to fall on your lap. It just doesn't. So you, I, I'm really a big believer, even though I'm old, technology with social media is pretty cool because I do get a lot of calls from social media. What are you putting on there that people are calling? Um, stuff about my dog. <laughs> I actually think people, you know, I'm going to go back to Carolina. They respond to dogs. Yeah. I get more, I have more pictures of dogs in my Instagram account than I have people, I believe, most days. Me too. And, and, and you know what? I'm pretty okay with that. I am too. Yeah. But every so often I do a fun reel and I'll be at a house and I, I don't, second guess it. I just go with it. You know, people will say, oh, aren't you worried that how you're going to look and it's going to, you're going to make up something and it's like going to sound stupid and I'm like, I don't care. That's kind of who I am. <laughs> and okay, it's kind of better if you make a mistake. People respond to people who aren't perfect. Authenticity. And so I think that's really important. So I do encourage all of our newer agents coming in or even the mature agents do a real get on there put yourself out there it's not that scary and you don't have to post it if it doesn't look good you know just don't do it but even my son who's my partner in the business he who's 40 something years old is really not comfortable with it and I'm like just let go just be who you are and you know people will respond so I think Instagram is like my new best friend your son is working with you. He is. Are you dividing up duties, or are you both doing a little of everything, or have you sort of split off and decided yeah. how to work that? We we kind of split everything. You know, he's really better at all the technology stuff. I can except he doesn't like to be on. He doesn't, he doesn't like, like to be, be on, on camera. camera. But he's great, like with DocuSign and DigiSign and that loop. It's like not my friend. So I try to stay away from that part of it. He he does mm -hmm. all our documents and all that. Um, but, you know, we both work with the sellers, we both work with the buyers. I'm, as I say, I'm a little older and I'm trying to put more responsibility to him so that I can ease out of the business mm -hmm. in five years. Okay. That <laughs> seems two. That, or two, or however. <laughs> or next week. <laughs> Depends on the day, <laughs> doesn't it? Or maybe August 18th. <laughs> Depends on the day. <laughs> Speaking of the changes that are coming, you and I both lived through a lot of, I was thinking about this the other day. I still remember, we have, actually we have two here in the office, we have two of the old books where you got a piece of paper once a week with the new listings on it. So we've lived through a lot of iterations on how our, our business was done. Mm -hmm. And it's become so pervasive, someone said, well, you know, the internet came. And I thought, I had forgotten all about, I mean, it, it, we've, it's gotten to be such a part of our life that we don't even think about that anymore. Now how we're gonna use it, and but we're well aware that every, that there's information at our fingertips that wasn't when you and I started in real estate. And so these changes coming, we, we, we talked about this a little earlier this morning, you're not freaking out about these changes coming. No, but it was what it is. And I think, you know, everything just kind of settles down along the way. I remember when the internet really started and like you and I said, oh my God, what are we gonna do? Um, it was really nothing. It's great. I mean, we love it. It didn't eliminate our position because mm -hmm. you still need that human voice. You still need that person in front of you who could decipher all the information, too. Um, we've walked in the houses. The Internet has not walked into the houses. Yes. So we're able to really guide our clients and give them direction of, you know, how do you go about this? I um, mean, I think that's what 
the agents have to think about now, it's not going to change how we do our business. It'll make us smarter. It'll make us listen to our clients more and really focus on what we're doing and not just like say, oh, here, you know, walk in the door. You really better know your stuff. And I think it's going to, I, I actually see it as a positive change absolutely. coming. Do I think it's going to be a hard two years? I yes. do. I think you're going to have people who really struggle with this. But in the end, you know, I was telling you, I, there was this lovely older gentleman in one class I, got, I, I was teaching early on when all these changes came and stood up and said, I've done this a long time. We are all going to be more professional. We're going to be better. It's been interesting to me to try to get people to articulate because one of the questions I ask in every class or presentation I'm making, what's your value? Mm -hmm. It's been so hard to get people to articulate what that is. I, don't, I think part of it is education. I think a lot of the companies just really haven't educated their agents. And, and that's really been over the last few years of maybe, you know, I know when I started, you had to take classes. Mm -hmm. You know, we, there was no ifs, ands, or buts. We had to continue. It, the continuing education was much more difficult too because we were you had to take a test. You had to take you a really test. had to read what you were, yes. you know, relearning. So I think unfortunately a lot of these companies have eliminated that layer. Yeah, maybe when you join they'll say you have to take a week of this and I think the North Shore Board used to have I don't know if they still require this. We do you, an orientation, but it's more about the board than it is about how to do right. business. And that's the hard part because you can't teach something from a book how to do this business you have to have real life experience you have to come to your classes which yes. we love um, and I think you really that's the only way you're going to learn getting out there it's real life it's not what you're reading in the book it's learning how to interact with other people interact with your fellow agents and I think that's where things have really gotten out of hand because there's no respect for each other in the business and I'm seeing that getting worse and I just don't like I think it. it's gonna have to change though it has to but here's what I here's one of the interesting things well how are we gonna know what the compensation is going to be and I say this old-fashioned thing I said well you might want to call them up <laughs> both of us the same thing a telephone oh my god well 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 I said yeah you might want to call them well what if they don't what if they don't respond to my calls well, after a while, they're going to get the hang. I mean, I think one of the things is we're going to go backwards on this a little bit. I think people are going to get more responsive because they're going to have to answer those kind of calls. Um, I said, yes, yes, yes. Then do a text and memorialize what there's all that stuff. But this idea that I can do my entire business via the Internet, on texting or by email or texting, you're missing the boat here, guys. You are just missing the boat. You just can't do this. That human element in the technology is the correct mixture of things. Absolutely. Use the technology to do everything that you don't want to do that's routine and road, and then be a human being the rest of the time. Absolutely. I feel that that's why, I mean, I obviously have been in the business a long time, but I have great relationships with agents because I talk to them. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we put each other in each other's faces. We have an, you know human connection. And I hope that's if anything is going to change, that's going to bring back more of that human connection, that we like each other, we want to work with each other. And I think if there's anything I would say to young agents out there, be, I don't know, friendly, you know. <laughs> be what a strange call. Yeah. What a strange concept, right. be no, friendly. Be friendly. It's yes. not, you know, don't antagonize each other. And I think, you know, we're in it together. And I just have found over the last few years, definitely this kind of like really bad behavior so hopefully I think you're right I think it's good that's to my hope that that is gonna be just simply because people are going to be forced to go backwards I had someone ask me about send me something you know because I write these things on Sunday I had someone write me back and say what happened to the loyalty that people had and she did a, big, a fairly long couple of sentences about where the disloyalty was so I really went around I mean I kind of rolled that around in my head for a couple days and I kind of came back to what I was just saying about we have to get back to the I my final line on what I wrote because it's probably going to come out this Sunday is put all your technology away for a week see what happens mm -hmm. I'll bet you'll find that people are more loyal to you when you're not when you're in real time you're really a really person right. instead of a, a text or an email or something like that so I think maybe this is this maybe this is the secret good of what's going to come out of this. We're going to hope for that anyway. I hope so. I do too. Um, if you had one wish, 
Well, let, uh, but something else I wanted to ask you about. You also do a lot of relocation. I do. Um, it's funny because I kind of thought I was going to get away from relocation with, you know, Illinois losing people. People all the time, yeah. But we actually just worked with somebody from San Diego. We just also worked with somebody from Portland, Maine. So it's kind of an interesting time. I mean, and I expected this year to have no relocation, but here's two in the last really six weeks. Um, and both of them are under contract, yay. Yes. And they're excited to move here. Um, but it's... Um, it's, it, I really got away from it for a while because I was so busy with other things. Every okay. location was just a little too much paperwork, a little too much nothingness. Um, but I was big on giving out people, too. So, okay. um, and it's more direct now. It, you know, it's not the relocation company so much. It's you know internal company mm -hmm. referrals. Um, so for us, that's changed a lot because if there is anything I could say about relocation... The paperwork involved it was back horrendous. When was horrible. It was horrendous. Horrible. So now it's kind of easy. We just signed a referral agreement. Boom, done. And we've been very lucky to work with great people across the country. It's kind of fun to do that too. I love it. Do you end up learning about all about the other places that way? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And I make it my business. Um, with Compass, we have a lot of different retreats and things I'm invited to. I go to everything because that's where you network with the other agents. They get to know you. When I pick up the phone to refer something, I just referred somebody in Florida. If I didn't know this agent, I'd be going blindly trying to go eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I connected with this young man, just sent him a $3 million referral, and it's like, oh my God. And I knew him, so I felt comfortable referring it. So I encourage agents, again, it's all about networking, meeting people across the country, pick up the phone. You don't know somebody and just say, hi, I saw your Instagram. I really liked it. I'd love to talk to you more. So I think that's, again, one of the great things about social media. You're seeing somebody come across on Instagram that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Pick up the phone. I had someone in Durango. I was teaching down in Durango. And they were talking about going to the convention when they still call them conventions instead of whatever they call them. Right. And there were people around the table saying, well, we just can't afford to go. You know, we can't afford the fees to go and we can't go. Mm -hmm. One of the guys in the office said, I'm going to tell you, you guys are dopes. He said, I go to every meeting. He said, and I make more money from that meeting than it probably three or four or five times what it cost me to go to the meeting because I meet everyone there and I build a referral base. You're not getting the hang of how this is supposed to work. Right. And I, I mean, he stays in my mind that he was just like, you're just not getting it, guys. Um, yeah, so I'm glad that you're doing that. I mean, yeah. You have a company that does a lot of cool things as well. We do. Um, yes. Um, if you had words of wisdom for brand new baby agents, brand new coming into the business with good hearts, mm -hmm. wanting to help people in mm -hmm. that, what would you tell them? Well, first I probably would just say, listen, don't talk. Listen <laughs> to what's going on around you. I think for me... When I came into the business, I mean, I wasn't super young anymore, but, you know, I was mid-30s. Um, I listened to the agents, the older agents around me, and I picked up more in that period of time, and I, I tailed them. I, you know, I said, what can I do? Can I do, you know, run and do something? That was the best education, and I think, you know, we all could help each other. We never stop learning. You know, people say, oh, well, you don't need that anymore. I need it. I need to learn every day. Every day I wake up, I say, this is a new day. Sure, I'm experienced. I've been in the business a long time, but I learn something every day, mm -hmm. whether it's from the new agent coming in. So I'm listening to what they're saying, too. I think that's one of the things everybody likes to hear themselves talk. But instead of talking, listen to what people are saying around you. And I think that's the best possible thing a new agent can do. I'm trying to convince them to go back and, like, go on tour with the agents. Yes. I keep saying, you know, I can teach you all the scripts and I can teach you all that stuff, but I cannot teach you what the three people in the car are talking about, about that street over there and the water that it gets and the trouble right. that it has. And it's not written down anywhere. I can't even direct you anywhere to go find that information. Right. It's on-the-job training. I think it's harder for agents right now to get that on-the-job training. Well, and I think because that's how we grew up in the business. Yes. You know, we caravaned, we toured together. We'd have office meetings. We would have def definitely more interaction in the office. One of my things that I'm trying to encourage our offices and our agents within my Glencoe office, come into the office. 
interact again with agents. You yes. know, people are working from home, and I think that's the harder thing, that we can't get people back in the door to just, you know, scuttle was always a big deal for us, mm -hmm. and that's where we would sell things without even a house coming on the market, because you were listening to what was going on around you. Yes. And I think that's one of the problems I'm seeing now. The agents, especially the newer, younger ones, well, I think it's easier for me to work from home because my kids are here, and they're just not coming in they're the office. They're not coming in the office. And they're not committed. And they miss an enormous amount of information Absolutely. and learning doing that. Absolutely. I think so. I do as well. You know, I see dozens of agents every week. Every single time they sit in front of me, someone will say something, and I will think, I didn't think of that. I should have thought of that already. And I didn't think about that. Or they'll tell me something new about what's going in the market. It's the best part of my job is that there's always something new to learn. Yes. And I think for good realtors, that's one of the things. I think that's what makes realtors like their job. They don't wake up every day and do the same thing. There's always something new to, to try. Absolutely. Glo, thank you for being here today. This thank was you. very fun. I enjoyed this very much. I did too. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. Just a note, the views of our guests may not reflect the views of the North Shore Barrington Association of Realtors.